Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Kovalt and in this video I'm going to be going over some extra practice problems involving gas stoichiometry. So I'm going to go over like five problems um, to show you uh, how to solve various uh, gas stoichiometry problems and just to kind of give you more practice. So in this video what I would like you to do is um, uh, before I go over how to solve the problem read the problem, try to solve it on your own, and then play the video and see if what you did is what I did and if you got the same answer as me. Okay, let's get into this. So here's the first problem. So we have uh, a question, what volume of oxygen at STP is needed to completely burn 15 grams of methanol in a fondue burner? And they tell you that the products are carbon dioxide and water. So go ahead and pause the video, work on this problem, and then start the video when you're ready. Okay, so first thing you need is a balanced equation. So um, you're told that you're reacting methanol with oxygen and you're forming these products. So you write out the skeletal uh, equation. So you got CH3OH. And then that's going to react with oxygen. And you're told that carbon dioxide and water are the products. These are typically the products of a combustion reaction involving uh, hydrocarbons, anything uh, that has CH and O in it. Um, typically, if it's, a if it's a complete combustion, then carbon dioxide and water are always going to be the products. So um, that's why they're giving you that information. So um, CO2 plus H2O. And so there's our equation. Let's put in um, some states. So that's going to be a gas. That's going to be a gas. Water, uh, depending on how you look at it, it could be a liquid or a gas. But <clears throat> here we can say it's a gas because, you know, um, <clears throat> If you're burning something, it's it's hot, so any any water that's formed would typically be or suspected to be a water vapor and not liquid water. Um, and this would also be uh, a, a liquid. So here we have liquid. And so let's balance the equation. So for the balanced equation, we would have uh, three oxygen, two is going to react with that. And we have two carbon dioxide and four water. So you should uh, balance the equation. Now we have our balanced equation. So now we can go and uh, start to actually solve this problem. So we're given 15 grams of methanol, and we want to know what volume of oxygen at STP is needed, right? So we want to go from grams to liters of a different substance. So we're going to use our highway, our, our conversion highway. So we're going to want to take the mass of A. In this case, it's our methanol. Convert that to moles. So we're going to go to moles of A, which again is our methanol. We're going to use the molar mass to do that. And then you can use the mole ratio to convert from moles of A to moles of B. And our moles of B is the oxygen that we're interested in because they want volume of oxygen. So now that we have moles, we can use, uh, we can get the volume of B, which is our oxygen. And here we can do that by either using uh, the ideal gas law and plugging in standard temperature and pressure. Standard temperature and pressure is going to be zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. And pressure is going to be one atmosphere or 101.325 kilopascals or 760 torr or whichever value you want to use. It just depends on what R constant you're using, what, uh, what units are involved in your R constant. Um, so uh, so, or you can use the, uh, the molar volume at STP. So one mole of any gas at STP is going to be equal to 22.4 liters. So you could use that as well. I'm going to use the molar volume to, to solve this. 
So here uh, I start with the 15 grams of the methanol, CH3OH over one. Next, I'm going to use the molar mass, and the molar mass is 32.05 grams per mole. So I'm going to put 32.05 grams of the CH3OH, our methanol, and then one mole of the CH3OH on top. So grams of methanol cancel out. Now I have moles of methanol. So now I, I'm here with moles of A. Now I want to get to moles of B, which is my oxygen. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mole ratio. So two moles of methanol to three moles of oxygen. So I'm going to then put two moles on the bottom. So two moles of the methanol, CH3OH, and then three moles of oxygen, three moles of O2. Now I'm going to cancel out. So moles of methanol cancels out with moles of methanol. And so now I have moles of methanol. So I'm here at this part. So now I can find the volume liters in, uh, of O2. So I'm going to use the, uh, the molar volume. So at STP, I know that one mole of any gas is going to be 22.4 liters. So I'm going to use that. So then I know that one mole of oxygen is going to be equal to 22.4 liters of oxygen. So moles cancels out. I have liters. So now all I need to do is multiply across the top, divide by what's on the bottom, and then I have my answer. And I get 15.7 liters of oxygen. So that's the answer. So hopefully that's what you got. Um, if, if you use PV equals NRT here and you got the same answer, that's fine too. You could use that. Um, so uh, that's uh, number one. So that's an example or extra practice problem number one. Next is going to be number two. Okay, here's problem number two. So take a look. So here, uh, when sodium chloride is heated to 800 degrees Celsius, it can be electrolytically decomposed into sodium metal and chlorine gas. So what volume of the chlorine gas is produced at 800 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascals of pressure if 105 grams of the sodium is produced? So once again, we need a balanced equation. So, but first, why don't you pause the video, see if you can uh, solve this, and then restart the video when you're ready. Okay, let's get into this. So, first, our balanced equation. So, our balanced equation would be 2NaCl, and that's going to be solid, and that's going to be going towards, or let's do liquid, because we're assuming it's a liquid. We heated it enough so that it melts, and then when it melts, it can uh, electro electrolytically decompose. So here, we're going from uh, two uh, NaCl liquid, and again, if you did solid, that's not going to affect the equation. It's not going to affect the problem. Um, so here, uh, then this is going to go to two and a as well. And again, that it's going to be liquid plus <clears throat> chlorine gas. And that's going to be just Cl2 gas. And so there's our balance equation. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to use this balance equation to help us convert from one thing to the other. So here they're giving us uh, 105 grams of sodium. So this is our A, this is what we're going to begin with, and our B is going to be what they're asking for. What volume of chlorine gas? So we want to go from sodium to chlorine gas. So, <clears throat> so we're going to go from one product to another product. So we're going to start with uh, the mass of our sodium, which is our A, right? We start with mass of sodium A. 
and we're going to convert that to moles of, of our sodium A using the molar mass. So we're going to use molar mass to convert from grams, right? This is in grams, to moles. And then once we get moles of A, we want to get moles of B. And we're going to go from moles of A to moles of B using our mole ratio in the balanced equation. So 2 to 1. And then once we get moles of our chlorine gas, they want to know the volume. So we're going to go uh, to the volume from moles to volume of B. And here we're going to use PV equals NRT. So here we're using molar mass to convert mass of A to moles of A. Here we're using the mole ratio in our equation. And here we're going to use the ideal gas law. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we're going to start with 105 grams of sodium over one. And then we're going to use the molar mass of sodium. So the molar mass of sodium is 22.99. So we have 22.99 grams of sodium on the bottom and one mole of sodium on top. So grams of sodium cancels out. And now I have moles of sodium, which is my A. I want to get moles of my B, which is going to be the sodium, uh, the chlorine gas. So then I'm going to use my mole ratio. So two sodium, two moles of sodium for one mole of chlorine gas. So two moles of sodium on the bottom and one mole of the Cl2 on top. So moles of sodium cancel out. Now I'm going to get moles of my chlorine gas. So I'm going to solve for that. And when I solve for that, all I do is, I, again, multiply by everything on the top, divide by everything on the bottom, and I end up getting 2.284 uh, moles of Cl2. So now I have the moles of Cl2. I have the pressure in kilopascals. I've got the temperature at 800 degrees Celsius. I'm going to have to convert that to Kelvin. And so remember, uh, to convert to Kelvin, I'm just taking the degrees Celsius, 800 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to add 273, 273.15, or you can round to 273. Uh, and then that's going to be uh, 1073.15. So 1073.15. Uh, I'll just round to 73. So that's going to be 10,000 or 1073 Kelvin. So now that I have the temperature in uh, Kelvin, now I can use the ideal gas law. And so the R constant value that I'm going to be using is 8.31 kilopascal liters per mole Kelvin. Now, the other one that I will use a lot, and that's uh, very commonly used, is the 0 0.08206 uh, value. And the difference there, the reason why it's 0 0.08206 is because instead of using kilopascals as a pressure, you're using atmospheres. So, um, so that's the reason. So here, if we're, I was using the 0 0.08206 uh, value, I would have to convert my 100 kilopascals into atmospheres and plug that in. So uh, it just depends on what units you have or what units, yeah, what units you have in your R constant, your ideal gas constant. Um, and then you got to make sure that the units that they gave you fit there. If they don't, then you got to convert to those units and make sure they cancel out. Okay, so we have our units. So uh, we want the volume, what volume? So we're going to use PV equals NRT. So V is volume. We're going to solve for volume. So that means volume is equal to NRT over P. And now we just plug everything in. So we have the number of moles, right? So number of moles. So that's going to be 2.284 moles multiplied by R, which is 8.31 K 
kilopascal liter over mole Kelvin multiplied by the temperature, which is going to be 1073 Kelvin. And then divide it all divided by pressure. Uh, and our pressure was 100 kilopascals, so 100 kilopascals. So everything should cancel out except for liters. So moles cancels out, kilopascals cancels out, and Kelvin cancels out. And we have liters. So now all I have to do is just do the calculation, multiply by everything on top, divide by the bottom, and I end up with getting... Uh, a volume equal to what I calculate, it's a 204, 204 liters of Cl2. So that's the amount that's produced if I produce 105 grams of my sodium. So hopefully you got these answers. So if you did, great job. If you didn't get this answer, then hopefully you found your mistake as I was going through it. Okay, let's go on to... Example number three, extra practice number three. Okay, so practice number three, I forgot to change the number here. So we got practice problem number three. So what mass of propane, C3H8, can be burned using 100, milli, 100 liters of air at SATP? Now I could stop there and make the problem a little bit more difficult. Um, but here I want to write a note. So the note is that air is 20% oxygen, right? I could stop there and then you would have to realize that what does 20% uh, mean for air to be oxygen, right? 20%. That just means that out of a hundred liters of air, 20 of those liters is oxygen. Why is this important? Because in the reaction, uh, when you're burning, uh, a hydrocarbon like C3H8, propane, um, that's the other reactant is oxygen. It's not anything else. So it's the oxygen in the air that's reacting. So you can't assume that, oh, I have 100 liters of air, so oh, I, that's 100 liters, right, of, of my reactant. Well, no, it would only be 20% of those liters is your reactant because 20% is oxygen. So that's why that's important to keep that in mind. So, uh, so that means that 20 liters of oxygen is, is our reactant amount. So the second thing I want to point out is that, again, uh, for uh, when you're burning a hydrocarbon, um, if it's complete combustion, which is always assumed unless you're told otherwise, then the products are always going to be carbon dioxide and water when you're burning a hydrocarbon in the presence of oxygen. Okay. So... First thing we need to do is write our balance equation again. So we have C3H8 plus oxygen is going to give us CO2 and water. And so we're going to have to balance this equation. So we're going to have to have five oxygen there and three carbon dioxide and four water. So that's our balanced equation. So then the steps here that we're going to do is, since we're given um, 20 liters of our oxygen, right? So 20 liters is our reactant. So air is not our reactant. Oxygen is our reactant. So we're using 20 liters of oxygen because, again, 20% of 100 liters of air is going to be 20 liters. So we're given 20 liters of our oxygen as a reactant, and we're asked, asked what mass of propane can be burned by this, the other reactant. So we're going to need to convert from one reactant, oxygen, to the other one, propane. And they give us liters. So in order to convert, we need to use a mole ratio. So we need to convert our oxygen to moles. So we're going to have to first use PV equals NRT. So we're going to go from volume of A, our oxygen, to moles of A, which is our oxygen, using PV equals NRT, or you can use the, uh, the standard ambient temperature and pressure, right? So it's just like STP, but we're given um, 
where is it at? We're given SATP. SATP stands for standard ambient temperature and pressure. So instead of zero degrees Celsius, it's going to be 25 degrees Celsius, which means it's going to be 278 or 298 Kelvin. Okay. So 298. So under, under standard ambient temperature and pressure, we know that there's the molar volume is 24.8 liters. So 24.8 liters for every mole of gas at SATP. Okay. So you could use the molar, molar volume as well. All right, so um, I'm going to use molar volume. So I'm going to set up my uh, conversions. So I'm given 20 liters. I have 20 liters of O2. And I know at standard ambient temperature and pressure, one mole of any gas is equal to 24.8 liters. So I'm going to put 24.8 liters of oxygen on the bottom one mole of oxygen on top so liters cancels out now i have moles of oxygen so now i can use the mole ratio between oxygen and propane to convert to propane so i have five to one so five moles of o2 on the bottom one mole of propane, C3H8 on top. So moles of oxygen cancel out. Now I have moles of oxygen, but I don't want mole. I'm sorry, I have moles of propane. I don't want moles of propane. I want mass of propane. So I'm going to convert to grams using molar mass. So I forgot to finish this. So moles of A goes to moles of B, which is my propane. That's where I'm at now. And then finally, I'm going to convert moles of A to, or moles of B to mass of B, uh, which is grams using the molar mass of B. And so that's my last step. And so I'm going to put, uh, so the molar mass of uh, this propane is 44.11. So one mole of the propane, C3H8 on the bottom, and 44. Point, let me make sure I got that right. 44.11 grams of C3H8 on the top. So moles cancels out. I am now done. So I have the grams that I want. So now I'm going to multiply across the top, multiply by everything on the top, and divide by everything on the bottom. Divide, divide, divide. And I get my answer, which is 7.1 grams of the propane. So that, ladies and gentlemen, would be the answer. Again, hopefully that's the same answer you got. Uh, if you didn't get this answer, hopefully you realize what your mistake is as we're going through. So you won't make that mistake again. Okay, let's try number four. Okay, so here we are at with number four. So number four says, a 5.0 liter tank holds 13 atmospheres of propane. Again, our friend propane, C3H8, at 10 degrees Celsius. What volume of O2 at 10 degrees Celsius and 103 kilopascals will be required to react with all of the propane? So here it's interesting because when we're going, we're starting with uh, a tank that has five liters. So that's going to be constant. We, we have that, that. And we're starting with uh, 13 atmospheres of one gas. And we're going, and they're asking what volume of the O2 uh, of, uh, at this uh, 10 degrees Celsius and 103 kilopascals will be required to react with all the propane. So, oops. So basically we're starting with liters of one gas and we want to find liters of another gas that's going to be reacting. And so we're going to have to use PV equals NRT, the ideal gas law to convert to moles, then use the mole ratio and then convert using the uh, ideal gas law again. So here we're, we're given, um, we're given, um, uh, what is it? Uh, liters. 
So we're given liters of one gas. So we're given liters and the and atmospheres of one gas. So we're going to have to use uh, volume, the volume of A to go to moles of A. So we're going to use volume and all the information you're giving us to get to moles of A. So we're going to use PV equals NRT. <clears throat> then we're going to go to moles of B using the mole ratio in our balanced equation, same equation as before. And then we're going to, again, get volume of B using PV equals NRT again. <clears throat> so because we got to get from a volume to moles, we got to use PV and NRT here. And then from moles to volume, we're going to use PV equals NRT here. So let's get into this. So first, <clears throat> we want uh, to find the moles. So moles of uh, the propane. So we solve the equation for moles. So moles is going to be RT over PV. And then we're going to plug everything in. We got our 8.31 kilopascals. Uh, liters over, over, uh, oops, I got, I got that wrong, kilopascals, no, that's right, sorry, kilopascals, liters over, uh, over mole Kelvin, I was confusing myself here, uh, multiplied by temperature, now, uh, we're given 10 degrees, so the temperature at 10 degrees, we got to change that to Kelvin, so that's going to be 10 plus 273, which is going to be 283 Kelvin. So 283 Kelvin is there. And then our pressure here, we're given 13 atmospheres. Now, because we're given 13 atmospheres, um, we're not going to use the kilopascal. We want to use the atmospheres one. So that's going to be atmospheres. And we're going to have to change this number to 0 0.08206. So remember, R can also be equal to 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres over mole Kelvin. So we're going to use this one because we got the units for that one. Okay, so then we're going to put atmospheres. So that what's the atmospheres? We got 13 atmospheres. And then we got volume, and the volume we're told is 5, 5.0 liters. So that's the volume of the gas we have. So liters cancels out, Kelvin cancels out, atmospheres cancels out, we got moles. So then the answer here is going to be uh, 2.8 moles, so 2.8 moles of our gas, which is propane, C3H8. Now, you could have used the 8.31 here, but you would have to convert 13 atmospheres to, uh, to kilopascals, right? So you just know that one atmosphere is equal to 101.325 kilopascals. Use that to convert to kilopascals, and you can go ahead and use that one. So no, no big deal there. So now I have moles here. I'm going to just do 2.8 moles of the C3H8 and use the mole ratio in my equation. So I want to go from moles of my propane to moles of oxygen. So one to five. So I'm going to have one mole of the propane to five moles of the oxygen. So moles of propane cancels out and I get 14, 14 moles of oxygen. So there I have my oxygen. And then the next step would be to use the PV equals NRT again. So I'm going to use moles of oxygen, use PV equals NRT to convert that to volume liters. So then you solve PV equals NRT for liters. So volume, volume is equal to NR, oops, uh, NRT over P again. 
So uh, I'm going to continue here in my next video in part two. So stay tuned. Thanks for uh, following me so far. I'll see you in the next video.